Now there are a lot of algorithmic questions that are related to randomization. But the most popular one that I can think of is the problem of shuffling, for example shuffling a deck of cards. And that is the problem that we will look at in this lesson, so let's go. Now before we look at anything else, the first thing that we need to clarify is the concept of the perfect shuffle. What a perfect shuffle essentially means is that any item can appear in any position with equal probability. So if we have n items in n positions, then any item can appear in any position with the probability 1 over n. Now that might sound like a hard ask, but it's actually quite easy to achieve. Fundamentally, we pick an item one by one and put it in the output. So assuming we have an array A, B, C, D, F, whatever, we pick an item at random, let's say we pick C, and we put it in position zero, then we pick a next random item, let's say we pick D, put it in position one, and then pick the next random item and so on. And we can actually prove the mathematical correctness of this algorithm quite easily, so let's do that next. Now since we're going to pick the first item at random, the odds of it getting picked are going to be quite fair, it's going to be simply 1 over n as we have n items. Things get a bit more interesting when we pick up the next item at index 1. The odds of it getting picked are essentially the odds of it not getting selected in the first attempt and getting selected in the second attempt. Now the odd of it not getting selected in the first attempt are actually quite high as we have n minus 1 items that will not get picked among the n items. The odds of it getting picked in the second attempt is simply going to be 1 over the n minus 1 items that we will be picking amongst. The n minus 1s will cancel out with each other, leaving us with the standardized 1 over n. And this process will continue for all other attempts as well. Only the chain of the item not getting in into nth attempts will get longer, however we will always be left with 1 on top and n at the bottom. So with the mathematical analysis of picking an item randomly one by one out of the way, let's look at our example once more. Our objective is to randomly select the items one by one, however there is one more complication that we need to think of. At each step we have to remember which items we have already picked and which items are still available to be randomly chosen. Now we could do this in separate data structures, however it's actually quite easy to do in a single array, so let's look at an example. We will essentially have the array as a shuffled and an unshuffled portion. We start off with a completely empty shuffled portion. So in our first attempt, let's say we pick C, move it into index 0, and we take whatever was there, for example in this case it is A, and move it into where C originally was. Now we have this shuffled portion containing C, and this unshuffled portion containing all the other members. And the next item we pick, we will pick randomly starting at index 1 all the way till n. Let's say we pick D, we swap what was already there which is the character B and move it into where D was. So in each step the shuffle portion gets bigger and bigger till we eventually run out of all the unshuffled members and then we have a completely shuffled array. Now understanding how the algorithm works might have been a bit involved but coding it up is actually going to be quite easy. We start off by bringing in our random integer function which we coded up in our previous lesson and then we have this template function which will take an array of type t and return an array of type t and the first thing that we will do is that we will create a copy of the input array as I don't like mutating our input arrays. However, if you delete this call to slice, this algorithm will still work perfectly fine, it's just that the input array is what we will be shuffling in place. Now for the main core of the algorithm, we simply have to loop through n times for n items and in each iteration, the first thing that we do is we get a random index starting at i all the way till the end of the array and then we swap the item at the random index with the item at the ith index. This means that the array has been shuffled up till i and then the loop continues with i++. This one line swapping of ith item with the random index item is a JavaScript trick that I have a lesson dedicated to as well if you are interested. Now once this loop terminates, we've essentially placed n items into n positions, which is exactly what we want our shuffle algorithm to do. Now because we are only looping through the input array once, the time complexity of this algorithm is O of n, and because we are creating a new array with array.slice, the space complexity is O of n, however if we remove this call to slice, we can essentially shuffle the input array in place, therefore giving us a space complexity of O of 1, which is constant. Now shuffling is a very well understood problem and the algorithm that we implemented in this lesson is known as the modernized version of the Fisher-Yates shuffle. 
And that's all for this lesson. Smash that like and subscribe and leave a comment below if there's another algorithm that you would want me to cover or you would like to see more algorithmic questions in general. And I will see you in the next one.